Why do we have to deal with systematics? Systematics is the science that studies biological diversity because it's the, discipline, the biological discipline that discovers, describes, names, systematizes, and found relationships. When I, I have to point out that I left some in Spanish because you have to have multicultural experience. <laughs> but most important of it is that for the study of biodiversity, we want this framework, this framework based on evolution. That is the only fra framework that allows us to understand the patterns of, the, of, the, of nature, of the biological diversity. For birds, we have a lot of information. We have a lot of phylogenetic information. We have web pages in which we can reconstruct the tree of life of birds. We have a lot of information in, in, in biological collections. But what's happening with the study of biodiversity in terms of systematics? And I am going to talk about the systematics of birds. Even though this is definitely one of the best known taxa on the world, re recent advances have shown us that our, our evolutionary framework is not, is not what we thought it was. This is a, a very recent paper that talks about a phylogenomic study of birds. It is a multi-multi multi gene analysis that led to a totally different uh, evolutionary path, evolutionary structure and classification of the birds. We want taxonomy to be a stable. We want taxonomy as a framework to understand biodiversity. And what we have here is, once you apply a different set of information, that is molecular, infor uh, molecular information, you get to another, a totally different set of groups th that conform mo monophyletic taxa and I'm messing, messing here a little bit. Again, again, sorry. Se, se, me, se, me fue, se me fue la palabra, este... Me, me, estoy, me estoy apendejando. Okay. Bird, bird taxonomy has been st more or less stable. We have, the, the, uh, we, we have had... Uh, uh, a, co a common classification uh, like chingas eh me, 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 me estoy apendejando no lo que lo que quiero decir es que tenemos una taxonomía muy estable tenemos una taxonomía muy estable y que luego este pues ahora tenemos un, un nuevo esquema vale okay Really changes the whole view of uh, bird taxonomy. Mm. What, what I want to say is this: the systematic community, the systematics community, is very eager to accept major changes in the higher level classification. For example, for birds, we have. We have had for years and years a classification that includes 27 orders, such numbers of families, da da da. Th those, those, those taxa were described in ba basic, basically on morphology and behavior, and we were happy with that classification. That was the evolutionary unit that we were recognizing as the diversity of birds. Once we have this new approach, that includes molecular data and that is giving us a different framework and we have to change the, the composition of the families and the orders, at everything at a higher level, the systematics community is happy. That, that's the point. 
They are eager to accept, accept all these changes. However, we have this taxonomic work that goes lower in, in, in the classification. We call alpha taxonomy. That alpha taxonomy is the part of taxonomy that deals with the description and naming and the circumscription of species, circumscription of species that, that we draw a line, that, that we... Uh, the hmm? the limit. The, the limit, the, the contents of, the, of those, those units. And this, and this part of the, of the classification, the, the limitation of species is very conservative. Instead of being open like, like is the higher level classification of taxa, this is very, very conservative. We have in birds, uh, uh, less species described each year, these new species to science, than in other taxa. But this is a figure that is, is interesting to see. This is uh, in, in, from 2000 to 2008, the number of species that were described each year and the regions where they come. And it is amazing that still in this very well-known group like birds, we have new species from regions that are supposed to be well-known. For example, we have a new species of chicken. From where? From the United States. That's a Gunnison, the Gunnison, whatever it is, uh, prayer chicken. Uh -huh. One kiwi, etc., etc. And for the years 2008 to 2012, 27 new species. And most of them from the tropical regions. So we, we have work, as, as bird taxon, we have work, but not, not many work. Very few in Mexico. Seems like the only ones that, that care about describing new species are Town and I. But many, many, many of these, this is, this is funny because many of these taxa were described as subspecies, although some of them are, of course, good species. But these are new things to science. We are now adding to the knowledge of the biological diversity of birds a, new, a very new set of data that we can obtain from behavior, from ecology, from song and from the genes. This is improving our knowledge, this is improving the amount of information that we have to the limit, to the limit the species, the, the units of, of, of the biodiversity. This is an analysis, this graph you, you have seen a version, you, you will see again another, another version of this graph, but this, this graph plots the number of publications on systematics for Mexican birds. And what you see is a systematic science that goes like a roller coaster. See, it's on fashion sometimes, sometimes it's not on fashion. But essentially what we see is an effect of Darwin. You see these peaks here. An effect of Darwin. An effect of Ernst Meyer. This is because Ernst Meyer. This is because researchers based in Mexico, we will see later about this. But the number of publications in Mexican bird system, systematics have increased a lot due to the, to the DNA methodologies. So we have a lot of information now arising from this, this group of data. I am surprised. I practiced my talk yesterday in my room by myself, and it was perfect. <laughs> so, <laughs> huh? no, it's not perfect. My, my my tongue is like turning like this. Sorry. Okay. Why is this important? 
because we want the, the all all the estimates of biodiversity are based on the number of species, and we want to know what, what units we have. As you have seen, ornithologists fight every time. We fight about what, what's the best way to do the field work. We fight about what's the best way to obtain estimates of the, of the distributional areas of the bird. But we fight a lot to see what a species is. And that's, that's, a, that's a common thing among biologists. What's a species? Everybody, everybody uses, everybody uses a species for your research, right? What is a species? How can you define a species? What's the name, the title of Darwin's book? The Origin of Species. Uh -huh. uh, have you ever read what Darwin says about what is a species? Darwin says, nobody knows what a species is, but at least the biologists have a faint idea of what a species is. And the title of the book is The Origin of Species, and he didn't know what a species is. What, what have you learned about what is a species? If, it's just a subset of a genus. A subset of what? <laughs> of a genus. <laughs> you're, you're working with species. You, you should be able to, to tell me what is a species. How do you tell this is a species and this is not species? I think as you pointed it out there, there's more than one definition. And those are the three most well-known ones. As far as I know, the most widely followed one is the biological species concept, uh -huh. which is the top one. Which, as far as I what? remember, I might get this wrong, is um, if um, two animals can mate and produce fertile offspring, they are considered a species. Okay. But then, it goes further down, I mean, there's more than three, I, I can't remember how many of them, there's quite a few species concepts, and depending on the context of ah, research. Yes, no, 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 we can, we can find 70 or uh, 100. It is a very difficult thing to find. Yes, but the, the thing is, you, you pointed it right. The most commonly used way to recognize the units of evolution and for biodiversity is the biological species concept. Biological species concept was, was developed but Ernst Meyer and all these guys from the new evolutionary synthesis, and they say a species is a set of populations that can interbreed and produce fertile offspring. So that means that species with asexual reproduction are not species. Species that cannot interbreed because they live far away one from another are the same or different species? Got you. Everybody speaks about species and few times you realize how you define your units of, of, of your working units. For example, for a phycologist, a species can be just a group of things that look alike. For a person working with jellyfish, a species is something that one, one day is a polyp. Polyp is the, the word. And part of his life it's a jellyfish like this, a medusa. So it's difficult to say. Also, the question is, are all species throughout the, the living things equivalent units? Do we want to have one 
species concept that embraces all the taxa along the biological diversity. We want that. Are all species of the world result of the same process? Of the same process, not the same pattern. Are all the result of the evolution? All, all, they should. So, so that's, that's muddy, right? It's messy. What do we call the species? Even for birds, that we know the biology very well, and we know that they have to have a male and a female to have chicks. Chicken? Chicks? Pollitos? Babies? Okay. We are moving among a realm of species concepts that need, need to be applied to identify these blocks on which we construct the biological, the way we understand the biological diversity. We have three main, three, three main sets of species concepts. Biological, that I pointed out, that relies on the interbreeding, the reproduction among populations. Evolutionary species concepts that say that species are lineages of populations, and lineages mean that is a set of populations that are connected a long time, that have their own evolutionary fate and destiny. Very fancy definition, right? And we have a set of concepts that in involve uh, an approach called phylogenetic species concept that says species are lineages connected through time, that exhibit differences, morphological or whatever, they, they exhibit synapomorphies. Do you understand that term? Synapomorphies? Synapomorphies? Everybody understands that? They exhibit new characters, new attributes, that can help, to uh, can help us to identify that these units are evolutionarily independent. Uh, was I clear or not? No? Like something I want to confuse. I'm sorry. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I, I want to believe that uh, the three concepts now that we are looking at are also changing. I think there is a fourth concept here. I have seen it that under, for example, fruit flies, we have complexes, and one complex I'll talk about is the Bactrocera complex. It has species that will not resolve under any of those three, but when you go to morphometrics, then you will find them being different. Genetics-wise, they don't resolve. There are no markers that will tell you that these are different, and these are complexes, and now, I think the list is going to four morphometric aspects. I don't know where they fall. We, we call that typological species concept. Yes. That, so. that is, we define species in terms of morphology. Yes. As a, uh, then, well, it's, an, it's another concept, you, you're right. Yes. And, and it's in some cases now, it's even more precise than the genetic. Uh, kind of classification because if you don't have markers that will resolve this then typological and I have seen this myself that within within even one country you have a given species and I'll just give an example of Bactocera invadens it's in can in one country and in the different zones you find clear differences when you subject these to molecular uh, tools you don't get the differences but when you go to morphometrics and you find clear differences population separate out and uh, from the arguments that have been coming, it's even a more promising tool to separate uh, things that will not resolve with genetic. You just push the thing that is most important here. 